It will in a couple days, and you don't have to do anything. A hematoma, on the other hand, is a collection of blood between um, between the bone um, of the stalk, exactly. Okay? Like, Maybe cause like one sided or two sided. Okay? It doesn't cross the suture line. Oh, okay. <clears throat> it may take about three weeks to go away. Strong suck. 
if you're assessing a kid that's like 34 or 35 weeks, you might not have as strong of a suck. It might take them a little while to kind of like figure it out. Okay. Rooting is when you stroke their cheek and they turn their head in that direction. Okay. Extrusion, so when you, um, like when you touch them, they'll stick out their tongue. Ears. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about symmetry. You see how that one is even with the eye, and the other one is a little low set. Low set could be an indication of a chromosomal issue or a kidney problem. You're going to check out the placement of the ears. They're going to do a hearing test with the baby. Usually they wait about 24 hours before they do it, maybe even 36. And they just put these little, like, almost like headphones on the baby. And if the baby passes, then everything is present and functioning like it should. If the baby refers or fails, we'll have to follow up with the pediatrician. All right, and this is like one of the machines that they use. The neck, uh, they're short. They have their creases in their folds. They can't support their head, so you have to make sure you tell the parents to support their head. Palpate for any masses um, or injuries to the muscles. You can feel their clavicles. You know, did the baby get, you know, was mom having a hard delivery? Did the baby get stuck in there? Did one of the clavicles possibly break on the way out? You know, so you want to feel for those. Uh, chest is round. It should be symmetric. The nipples should be in line with each other. Um, and then you should assess the breast sounds. Are they bilateral? Are they clear? Uh, sometimes you may see a milk-like substance called witch's milk that's secreted from the nipple. Did they pass any school? If they pass in the 
podium, like the first stool, then their ENS is paid. If you know, you're know you hitting 24 hours and they still haven't had a stool, there's something going on, um, be mindful of doing temperatures. This one says initial temp is taken rectally to determine if the rectum is paid. This is not they still need this no connection. Right. This is not um, common practice in, in a lot of places. It depends on the place that you are, what their what their practice is. Um, you want to be very careful, especially with doing rectal attempts and if, you know telling the parents, because you don't want to cause any kind of damage. You don't want to go too far. You don't want to you know be rough. You know because you can you can hurt them. So um, axillary attempts are the way you should go. If you want you know. And only in, in some places what they do, it depends on where, you know, where you're working, but unless indicated, like if the baby has a high, like, temperature, then okay, like what's going on, okay, you could take a rectal tap. Or if the baby's really cold, then go ahead and take a rectal tap. You're saying it's very negative about a question. It's not about what you're talking about. However, what about the ones that's born with the, it's not connected? Then they won't have, they won't have anything. They won't have anything. Yeah. So, okay, you, you have the baby, it hasn't had a stool in 24 hours, pediatrician follows up, you know, maybe they'll send the, the kid for a scan to see like what's going on, or they notice that, you know, if you're feeding the baby and it's not connected, it's not going down, eventually they're gonna just vomit it back up, you know? So, when you're seeing all these things and they follow through with it, then they'll be able to see and possibly, you know, do something surgically. Uh, stools, they could be um, that meconium, the, the dark green tar substance. When they start eating, they'll tra they'll transition to like a yellowish color. Um, if there's seeds yes, in it, kernels. it's breast milk. If there's no seeds in it, no mustard seeds, it's bottle milk. Okay? It's different. Well, breast milk, breast milk is like a laxative almost. Um, and it can be green, yellow, mushy, pasty, brown, all different kinds of colors. If it's very large, very frequent, black, purple, tarry, not a good thing. Right. So it is watery and the It shouldn't be watery. I mean, it should just be like mush, basically. It shouldn't be watery. Not like not like not like diarrhea. So these are some pictures of stool. Okay. All right. The back should be straight and flat. They um, don't really have any curves until they start sitting up. Make sense? All right. Assess for dimples, masses, hair tufts, or spinal curvatures. So you're flipping that baby over. You're looking at their spine. Everything should be nice and straight base right, right above where their, their bottom is, look in that area and see is there any any kind of dimple, is it open, do they have some kind of defect there, so you want to assess that area very well. What is it, is Spinal reflex, so if you stroke their back and they feel one of these, checking their hips. So, okay, if you have a breech C-section, how are those legs when they're in utero? They're like this, right? So when they come out, they're going to check their hips. So they're going to push down and over, push down and over, and see, are the hips in place? Are they okay? Um, you see the little, Ooh, like, wrinkles? What's his legs inside of the joint? See how, like, they build one leg is longer than the other. Can you pull it out? Can you pull it out? Like it looks like it's like the leg is like twisted the joint. Well, when they have them, like you have them like this, you're gonna push down and out. Like you wanna kind of see if it'll not pull click. I guess. So you see how they have the little folds there? The folds should be equal. Should be symmetrical. You should see the gluteal folds on both sides. It's 
you don't see them, something's up. So that's what it's trying to say. See how that one's straight? There's no folds in that leg. Exactly. So it's not it's not in the socket. Make sense? Um, extremities. Look at their fingers and toes. Do they have an extra digit? Sometimes there are families that have extra digits that run. Like in them. I had a family two weeks ago. Um, baby was born with an extra digit on the one side. There was no bone. It was basically like a large skin tag with a tiny little nail on it. So just tie it off and you know cut it off and be done. The other side had like a tiny little growth or that could have been like you know something forming there. And it did run in the dad's family. They had multiple people in the family who had six fingers. Yeah. So you want to you know check it out. Or is there any kind of webbing? Like are their fingers like you know stuck together? Are there tubes? Um, the hand should have three creases. If it does, that means something too. There could be like some kind of congenital issue. If it don't have three creases, it's it's supposed to have three. If it is it had like you have this one straight line. Herb's palsy, um, if the one um, arm is kind of like this, so maybe they had a difficult delivery and they caused some damage, so the arm's gonna be down like this. You know, could be a, um, a major issue. Kid won't be able to move the arm, extensive therapy, okay. Uh, Uter lateral moral reflex, so what happens, right? Only one side. So when you get the arms and you pick them up like this and you let go, what do they do? Right? So a unilateral one will just be like this. Make sense? Alright, femoral pulses, um, again, palpate at the same time. They should be equal, they should be strong. Um, Look for any kind of jerky or jittery movements. Um, could be a hypoglycemia, hypokalemia, hypoxia, any kind of neurological damage or drug withdrawal. Find out mom's history. Um, make sure, like, if she had some kind of drug abuse during her pregnancy, you want to monitor this baby for withdrawal symptoms. Um, a Ballard score is something that they do to estimate the gestational age. So maybe mom had no prenatal care or you know, was very off as far as her dating is concerned and not really sure how mature this baby is, how many weeks she is. So you're looking at skin, breast, lanugo, the eyes and ears, the plantar surface, the feet, um, the genitalia, and the gestational age, like trying to guesstimate, and depending on what the score is, that's where the baby falls. Fetal size, SGA means small for gestational age, LGA is large for gestational age, the weight alone does not determine the maturity or prematurity. I had a diabetic mom who was diabetic outside of pregnancy on an insulin pump. She was non-compliant with her diabetic diet and her insulin. I don't know what she was doing with her pump, but she ended up delivering a 33-week baby at 11 pounds, okay? So just because the baby was 11 pounds does not mean that it's okay. It was 33 weeks. Is that mature? Okay. Okay. So born with diabetes, do they tend to keep it by doing not diabetes? They can. They're they're at higher risk for it. They're at higher risk for it. So you can have gestational diabetes. Is your child at risk for diabetes? Well, you're at risk for having it post, like pregnancy. Oh, wow. you know. They so they can. Absolutely. One of my coworkers, it did. It stayed wow. with us. Yeah. Happens. Yeah. Um, we do go through a lot. <laughs> um, all right. So periods of reactivity um, at birth. You know they're quiet. They're alert. This is their perfect time to breastfeed to get that kid to latch because they're alert and they're looking for it. Once they get over that little hump, like that two-hour hump, they want to sleep. They don't bother. So if you're looking to latch this baby, okay, ASAP, get the baby to breast, and you'll have a um, better success rate of doing it. Um, this is just behavioral states. 
All right, PKU, you guys know what a PKU is? Some sort of, uh, so, they they so the state mandates a PKU chest blood work to be sent off on, the, on all babies, and they're looking for certain proteins that are not there from there. Um, and if it comes back positive, you will hear from your pediatrician. If you don't hear anything, then everything is fine. But basically, they are a highly restricted, restricted no protein. protein. No protein. Like yeah, the, no, they, they can't get no do. protein. Yeah. But then they can't drink breast milk either. They're, they're a very special diet. So they can't drink breast milk? They can't do a lot of things. Oh. But then it's like, it's, it's iffy because the first thing you want the baby to do when it come out is breastfeed. So if they're allergic to it, they have a chance of having a severe allergic reaction. So you won't know. Usually the PKUs aren't done until, I want to say, after 24 hours, 36 hours. Well, it depends on your, your hospital. But you won't know. So you have to wait for that blood work to come back. So it's the amino acid metabolism. It, it is what the things that they, they check for endocrine issues, organic metabolism, fatty acid metabolism, the amino acid, hearing, and cystic fibrosis. All right, difference between a cephalohematoma and Cabot. Oh, um, so one doesn't cross and one does. And what else? One is blood and one is blue. And that is chapter 10 and 11. Wow. Any questions? That was awesome. I feel like my face is <laughs> Again, a lot of this is repetitive. There was just a couple of things I wanted to show you. This is a picture of that little low jack that they put on the baby. Okay, a little sensor. Um, a lot of this is repetitive. Uh, we can take one in about five minutes. We'll take a short, quick break, okay? Oh, positions for holding an infant. So you have Football. Football. Okay. Also, when you're doing your breastfeeding, we'll, we'll cover this a little bit when we cover breastfeeding, there are different ways to hold your baby. You can hold it like this and support your breast. Or you can hold it like this. Or you can hold it like this. Or you can lay down. Okay, it's not just That's one way. Okay, there's different ways to do it. Lay down and then lay there. Yes. Um, there was okay premature infant pain profile based on their scale. So cries is a 10 point scale. Um, newborn must be at least 32 weeks. They're looking at expression, crying, movement of arms and legs, consolability, and oxygen saturation. So this is like how we have our pain scale. Newborns have their pain scale. Okay. Yes. Your needle and pass another one. All right, so that's why I just wanted you guys to see that. This is all repetitive, so don't even worry about it. Just you can review it for your um, for your benefit, really for your test. So if you guys want to take a quick five minute break, and then we'll cover newborn feeding. It's done. We are here till 2.30, yes. 